Hey everyone, Snoo back again with part two of the high-end crafting series. And I had no intention of making a video today, but I was tinkering around on my main. Uh, in between doing some Delirium Everywhere, that was my intention today, to do a bunch of uh, the Delirium Everywhere, level up a character to 95. But I was on standard for a few minutes, and I noticed I had a few harvest crafts sitting in there that I needed to use, particularly a chaos more common reforges. Had an amulet on standby ready for a dexed amulet on standby ready for a harvest craft reforge. And I hit it in two tries. Double plus one dexed plus one chaos all skill gems. And that's the hard part of that craft, so I said, uh, yeah, why not just go ahead and uh, change my plans a little bit today, finish that craft up. And I did, in a jiffy. It didn't take much. And what you saw in the thumbnail, that was uh, tried and true. It was actually the first one of those I ever sold. You want to guess how long it took me to sell that amulet? Give you a second, take a guess. You saw I sold it for 100x. You're probably thinking, you know, crafts like that, usually you got to put it on there and you're going to put it overvalued for a while and then you're going to lower it over time, at least a day, two days, a few days, a week, maybe two weeks. I mean, who knows? A craft like that could take a long time to sell. So what, what did you guess? Because the answer is it took three minutes, <laughs> three minutes for me to sell that amulet couldn't believe it it was in complete disbelief uh definitely uh motivated me to make a video <laughs> on this. um i was actually intending full well to make my next crafting video about this quiver right here but you know when something like that happens with what you saw in the amulet and it happens at three minutes flat okay i guess i'll uh change my plans <laughs> i'll talk about the amulet because clearly that works um, I've seen other content creators talk about crafting the same amulet. It's, it's actually a very popular amulet uh, in the mm, to uh, Toxic Rain, Caustic Arrow, Endgame Gearing meta, for sure. Every Everyone in my shoes knows about that amulet. I actually don't use an amulet like that personally, only because... Um, I really wanted to have the mana reservation efficiencies and skills, so I took a different route. I, I forged over on the... I did a Awakener Orb first and got um, the suffix clean, put Aspect on the Spider. I wanted to try that out, finish out the prefixes the way I wanted to. A very good amulet in its own right, but not meta. So the one that I'm going to uh, show you guys on the crafting today is uh, basically the meta Bis Endgame uh, Chaos Amulet for Toxic Rain, Caustic Arrow, as well as potentially many other uh, Chaos classes. You don't necessarily have to go Dex to gems. I su suspect there's uh, probably an Intelligence gem or even Strength gem variation that's really good. Uh, but the reason why that amulet is so good is because if you notice Anomalous to uh, or Toxic Rain as well as Caustic Arrow are both dexterity gems and they both have the chaos tag and this particular build uh, relies most heavily on gem levels it is far and away the best way to scale the damage of this particular build is plus gem so that's why having the dual plus one dex plus one chaos gem is so strong Anyone who's watching this video probably is aware of the, the build Toxic Rain and or Caustic Arrow and, and just how immensely popular it is. It is not a notorious popular endgame build. However, tons of people who League start that build end up going all the way with it. And I did this season with no regrets. So let's get into the craft. I was just giving you a little bit of background information on that. I have uh, right here... My file that I worked out it takes me longer than I think it does to to write these things up. <laughs> but anyway, here we're gonna start just like we did with uh, the dual elevated influence uh, tailwind onslaught boots. Same story here. I'm I'm gonna make this series. It's gonna go along, and you're gonna easily follow the format as you get used to me doing these. Um, title right here, How to Craft Plus One All Dexterity and Chaos Skill Gems, Chaos Dot Multi Amulets. 
amulets. What base should you use? Well, it's your choice. But uh, the average Toxic Rain Caustic Arrow player wants a gate amulet. They want the strength and the intelligence because they need both of those attributes. Um, and quite often, if you're not geared uh, really efficiently, you got to take these sorry ass nodes right here with uh, strength and intelligent or, or up here and I had to I had to use one or both of these for quite some time and go till I got my gearing fi figured out uh, so I'm not up it's yet. arguably the best uh, onyx amulets not a bad choice I have seen some of those but whatever base you want to do you can do and uh, it's probably gonna work out for you pretty well but I, I highly recommend a gate in this case Okay, so let's check it out here. We got ourselves, I got a lot of different tabs here open. Five on the right are the ones I'm going to be looking at. Uh, it says here, uh, check trade to verify the cost differentials of items sitting at steps one and five. I did something similar with the Tailwind booth, but here we got a couple places where you might want to check the pricing on. So I'm going to give you, just like the last video I did on this, I'm going to give you uh, my little URL here. Well, I got a nice setup. Uh, for one thing, I got a gate amulet in here. Oh, one thing before. What item level should we work with? Well, let's check out the elevated, or sorry, the influence modifiers. We can see that an 82 is the minimum we need over there. 80 is the minimum we need over here. Well, that's easy enough. Uh, what about here on suffixes and prefixes? Uh, increased elemental damage with attacks. We need 86, but we don't need that modifier in any way. Uh, tier 1 max mana. Don't really care, but sure. Okay, 85. Right there, 84 is a good number here to get uh, T1 rarity. Uh, prefixes look pretty easy, actually. Uh, suffixes are where it matters the most. Okay, we need 82 to hit the top tier um, attribute. 85 to hit plus one all attributes, which is an excellent roll of the multiverse on amulets. Uh, to hit all resist also, uh, we need item level 85. And for any of the resists, we need 84 as usual, 85 there. So 85, basically 85. You do not need an item level 86 for this item. You only need 85. 86, hunter influence to get amulets are quite expensive. 85, not so much. And you can totally settle with 85. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's see what an 85 hunter influence a gate amulet is worth. That's a mistake. Oh, this is offline. That's why <laughs> the numbers are so low. I was checking this earlier. Here we go. Uh, currently, they're around 40 chaos. Looks like 35 was put up recently. I got 50. 50 would definitely get you one for sure. Um... If you went with Onyx Amulet. Well, that's a lot of different uniques there. Probably cheaper. Yep, a little bit cheaper. People don't want it as much. Just for fun, Turquoise Amulet. I don't think anybody really wants this one. Let's see what this one might be worth. Unless maybe, no. Okay. Well, you can check them all to your heart's content. Uh... I don't pretend to know everything there is to know about all the different builds that exist, but I do know quite a bit about Toxic Arrow and Caustic Rain, and I can confirm that a Gate Amulet is the most desirable base for that particular build. If you're running that build, you probably want to do that. If you're making this just for selling purposes, you probably want to stick with this base. What about step one? Either roll or buy an eye level 85 plus base of your choice hunter influence amulet. We're going with a gate. With plus one dexterity gems, clean and no other prefixes. Well, what about just uh, plus one dexterity gem? Maybe I can annul the stuff off, right? Let's see what it costs. So uh, hunter influenced a gate amulet was like 40 chaos. If I want to even have this modifier on it in any way, shape, or form, I got to pay at least 2x. <laughs> That's not worth it. Screw that. Definitely not worth it. Um, what if it already had both of, this is step five here, so th this is both, um, dexterity and chaos gems. Let, let's look at this, I'm fast forwarding a little bit through the steps here, but this is one pivotal moment in the craft that you want to be aware of the pricing. I'm having to check this offline because there's hardly any available. Uh, looks like 8x somebody has here, okay, with a, yeah, a junky third prefix, no, no wonder there. 
Um, yeah, you got to look through these. You see that 2025X is a pretty popular number, so you can kind of get an idea of what this craft is worth just looking at some of these things right here. Uh, let's move back here. So it looks like... Well, what, one other thing you could do, obviously, is you could buy the Agate Amulet. I mean, what, what is 86 again? I'm just curious. See, people pay such premiums for 86 plus. I wonder what an 86 plus one is. Again, that was offline. Let's check online. Yeah, suddenly 60, 70, chaos. And there's just no reason for it. You don't really need to. I mean, you can if you want. If, you, if you're balling like that, you know, go ahead, <laughs> I guess. But uh, you don't really have to do 86. So I'm going to drop it down to 85 again. Pretty obvious that uh, your cheapest route to go with this is probably to simply buy the base with the influence already on it. Because at this point in the season, by the way, we're, I'm making this video around two-thirds of the way through the Scourge season. So there's a lot of bases floating around there. This may not be true, you know, in the first fourth, you know, first few weeks of the season. But for now, this, this is how we're going to do it. So I think that that's how, how we're choosing that. Um... Let's see here. Step one, it says either roll or buy. And now, we can't really buy it, I don't think, right? I certainly can't buy it clean for 2x. Now, I can buy it with Dexterity Gems already there, but it's not clean. It still has other junky prefixes. So, so for, for 2x price, it's absolutely not worth it. We're going to stick with rolling it on there ourselves. So we're going to have to roll plus one Dexterity Gems on ourselves. It's a hard thing to hit. It's the thing we're going to start with. And what is the waiting on this item? If you recall for Tailwind Boots, the waiting for Tailwind is 100. The waiting for plus one strength gems is... Dexterity gems, sorry. 200. Well, okay, it's twice as easy to hit as Tailwind, technically. Uh, still pretty dang hard to hit. And if you want to know how hard it is to hit, you can go into Craft of Exile Simulator. I did not show the simulator... Uh, tab last time, but I'm going to this time. Oh, sorry, calculator. My mistake. I meant to say calculator. Uh, we got to go into jewelry. We're going to go to amulets. Uh, alteration spam is is going to be the best way to hit. I'll, I'll explain why in a moment. We're going to scroll down to hunter on the prefix side. We're going to hit dexterity. We're going to add this influence. And given that that's all I care about, which is true, it's all I care about, I definitely don't want extra prefixes on it. Um, 400 on average, almost 500 orbs of alteration, which is only like 99 chaos. Okay, it's pretty cheap. It's actually not that hard to hit. It's going to take you quite a few tries. Uh, but anyway, let's start the process ourselves because I'm going to show you the craft through Craft of Exile, just like I did last time, all the way through. Uh, gate amulet 85 plus. Oh, I forgot to put the uh, influence on there. One more time. Jewelry amulet. A gate 85 with a hunter influence. This is what we're buying, basically. This right here. Okay, scoured. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna obviously put some modifiers on there, and we're just gonna go do 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 do. Just gonna spam it out, and I'm looking for plus one dexterity gems as a prefix. You can use uh, augmentation as well if if you feel like it's worth paying that close attention to. I generally don't, <laughs> but I mean you can. Um, I would suggest putting this in your inventory and marking it, you know, dexterity or whatever inside your search bar and wait until it lights up. Uh, it's going to take quite a few tries. I'm probably not going to hit it in the first minute or two. We're talking about a few minutes of rolling this thing uh, just to hit this. I haven't hit any skill gem one yet, have I? Wow, okay. So, you know, I mean, I don't care if I roll over it because I can just put it in manually. Uh, I haven't even seen it come up at all, you know, after like 50 clicks or so. So again, it's twice as, more, it's twice as common as Tailwind, which means it's pretty dang rare. I just saw malevolence uh, mana efficiency there a second ago. It's pretty rare as well. Well, you know, for this, it's, we're making a video. There's no reason for me not to do this. You can see how it's done. You're just going to roll it until you hit it. So let's pretend uh, I'm going to just throw it on there manually by going here and boom, there. So this is a likely outcome right here, what you saw right here. 
Uh, let's continue on through to step two. So in indeed, step one is done because it's clean and there's no other prefixes. Step two. Oh, and that'll cost approximately 2x. It's going to cost you 2x because it's going to cost you, I don't know, like uh, 30, 40, 50 chaos to buy the base. And then it's going to cost you... Um, actually, I could have put less on there. It's probably going to cost you another x um, or less to roll it on there. So I'm actually kind of over budgeting a little bit. Probably should put one and a half X here, or maybe even just one X here, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave it at two X for now, I think. Uh, let's move on to step two. Step two says, skip this step, assuming the amulet is magic and has no suffix. Well, it is magic because I used alteration orbs, which is why you wanna use alteration orbs. Uh, you can use uh, another method, different method here, Orbs of Alchemy, and you'll see that it will take you fewer tries, but it'll actually cost more chaos. This is the Orb and Scouring method. You know, if I want to be really lazy, I could just use Chaos Orbs, right? Okay, well, 200 some odd Chaos Orbs. So the cheapest is obviously Alteration, and you really want to use Alteration because you don't want to have extra prefixes on there. We have to start with two open prefixes. So that's how it goes. We're going to use alterations for this particular one. Or if you can find an amulet for literally for sale at, for 2x with this right here, I, I would buy that. I, it just it saves a lot of time, actually. But there is it does not exist uh, on trade currently. And it, in all likelihood, probably not going to exist. So you're going to have to roll it yourself. So, step Two, skip this step. It is magic and has no suffixes. If not, metacraft prefixes cannot be changed and scour. So that's written in red. Now, if I have it in red, that means it's not a mandatory cost. Because uh, if my amulet looked like this from the scouring and it just slammed in the prefix with no suffix, then I can skip step two. But because it had some random you know, suffix on it, like this, I cannot skip step two. And I have to actually go in and metacraft which is going to be uh, on the bench side and we're going to roll prefixes cannot be changed which is right here this is a 2x metacraft and we have to scour the sucker Oh, actually, I forgot one. I forgot. I did forget one little thing here. I got to back up, actually. I forgot that actually in game. So the website has a mistake. And I said in, in one of my other videos that this thing is like 90%, 99% accurate or whatever. There is there is one inaccuracy here. Uh, the game, or, or sorry, the website here is allowing me to add this and it transforms the item into rare quality. I don't think that's actually true. I'm 90% I'm sure that's not true in the game. It will say item does not have room for any more crafts which means you have to use a regal orb to make it rare and this is a 50 percent likely outcome where you actually slam in an additional prefix yeah okay so so this is a really good reason why uh to actually go ahead and say it's it's gonna be 2x to <laughs> for, for the initial craft because it this is gonna happen sometimes and when this happens i gotta try to annul the prefix off Okay, I got lucky there, and I did, no problem. So, but if I annulled the dexterity gems off, well, <laughs> yeah. One thing you can do is before you do the regal orb, you can imprint the item. It might be worth doing that, depending on the price of imprint beast. And we're going to be using imprint beast, actually, for this craft. But here we go. We got uh, prefixes cannot be changed. We're going to scour this. It's going to transform this back to into... A magic item and that part is done step three metacraft prefixes cannot be changed okay we've got to do it again and the reason is a really important thing we have to do it again we we have to have it the amulet must look exactly like this exactly like this for what we're gonna do next it has to be magic it has to have the prefix and it has to have the metacrafted suffix sitting on just like this because whereas uh, some other content creators videos I've seen talking about this craft, what they what they suggest uh, at this point is to just simply go ahead and start reforging uh, chaos. Sorry, re uh, yeah, 
we forge chaos more common like like that right there and then it's like oh okay what do you do next well you know you you're you're you're, you're, you're stuck with a prefix and you got to try to annul and it's like a, it just becomes a giant mess oh my god my dexterity gem's gone that's a huge mess so that's not what we want to do here what we want to do is go the imprint route we're going to do beast crafting and we're going to imprint boom and that will give you one of these little icons here in your bag and then it'll come in addition with it now uh how much does the imprint beast cost i have that right here it is called a krakic chimeral plus three other uh magic or sorry uh yellow beasts so as you know, if, if you were to just keep trying to metacrafting it over, that's 2x per attempt. That's 2x, 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 plus uh, you're dealing with uh, nulling prefix. It's just, it's just a total nightmare. Really expensive. And, and you know, what are you going to do about nulling de dexterity off? We, we can skip the issue of having to use a null orb, and we can save a huge amount of, of currency by imprinting every time. As you can see, throughout the middle of the season, imprint beasts were pretty steadily around the 70 to 80 chaos mark and i i bought many in bulk i bought like 50 or 60 of them at once for around 70 chaos a piece i was a little bit disturbed when i found later <laughs> they went up quite a bit to like over 100 chaos a piece now let's see what they're at now i'm curious like okay yeah create get chimera yeah, they've really gone up. Uh, a lot of the beast farmers have kind of, you know, turned off for the season or whatever. 125 chaos apiece now. So that is different, okay? Uh, it is towards the end of the season. The prices on this did fluctuate quite uh, quite a lot. But as you can see in the, in the early part of the season, oh my god, that's such a cheap way to craft to do that. That's unbelievably cheap. If these are sitting around 4, 30, 40 chaos apiece, even at 70 chaos apiece, still cheap. And you know what? Even at 125 chaos apiece... It's still way better. It's still way cheaper than uh, metacrafting over and over and over again. So this is this is how you got to do it. This this is definitely the best way to do it. So this allows me to just basically um, keep re uh, reforging chaos safely, and just keep reapplying the imprint. And when it fails, after every attempt, you imprint. After every attempt, imprint. And it's only, you know, 70 chaos uh, per, uh, on average. Now, I wrote in here 0.5x. So that's like 70 to 80 chaos, you know, midway through the season, basically. And, and I am budgeting this particular craft as if that beast cost around 70 or 80x. Because it did through most of the season. And it is more expensive now. So there's your disclaimer. I'm not lying to you. I'm just, you know, you... you People are mostly going to care about doing this kind of crafting early and midway through the season anyway. But you can do it late in the season, as I did, and you saw the result <laughs> yourself um, in the thumbnail. So here, we got Beastcraft, imprint the item via Krakic, Chimel, and Harvest, Reforge, Chaos, more common. Here we go for that. Go back to this. Chaos, Reroll Plus. Should say Reforge here, but... Anyway, boom, let's see what I got. Oh, I got uh, a low roll chaos resistant and no other chaos modifiers. <laughs> well, that's not going to work very well. So what will I do? I'll reapply the imprint. And then what? I chaos reforge again? No. No. You got to re-imprint the beast. Undo. I got to re-imprint the beast. So go back to the beast and I go re-imprint. Boom, got to make sure that's there every time. Can't forget. I've forgotten a few times before. And then if you forget, you lose your dexterity. You're starting all the way back to step one. So don't forget. Anyway. Let's quickly uh, go in here and see what, what kind of odds I have for hitting this. Because I'm trying to hit plus one chaos gems. Plus one chaos gems. Let's see what the odds are here. I'm going to use this one right here. Uh, POEDB, great resource to see the weightings. Uh, chaos, where are the chaoses for the prefixes? Uh, and this is amulets, by the way. There are none. Well, that's good. How about chaoses on the suffixes? We got one right here, chaos resistance. And it's a weighting, total weighting of 1,500. Hmm, kind of high. Okay. How about the influence modifiers? The hunter influence on amulets is all about chaos damage. So there's actually quite a few weightings here 
On the suffix side, we got chaos.multi, which we are going to care about later on, halfway through the craft. It's got a total weighting of 1,000, so that's 2,500 in total so far. We have on the prefix side another uh, prefix that is not so good, but not terrible, not too bad either. Not what we want to hit right now. And it's 500, so that's 3,000. Yeah, 3,000. And then we have Chaos Skill Gems. 2,500. Mm. 2,500. Divided by... No, it would actually be more than that. 2,500 divided by... 3, 2, 5, da, da. Oh, okay. Well, almost 8%. So... Yeah, not not a great not great odds <laughs> to hit that, right? Well, you see, that would be the odds of hitting it if I was using Reforge Chaos. Period. It would only be about, you know, one in twelve would be my odds of hitting it. Reforge Chaos period. But because we're using Reforge Chaos more common, it dramatically increases your odds of hitting extra chaos modifiers. I believe I believe what it does is it cranks up the weighting uh, tenfold on every chaos modifier. So it guarantees you one chaos modifier and then when it decides all the other modifiers it elevates the chaos rolls by ten. Ten times as much which dramatically increases your odds of hitting it for some of the other ones. I don't know exactly how the programming works. I don't know if it, if it you know, when, when it force chooses a chaos modifier, if it chooses prefix first or suffix first, I almost feel like it actually chooses prefix or suffix first, which would be favorable in this case. Uh, or if it just chooses uh, a chaos ma modifier randomly, or if it chooses a chaos modifier based on the, the weightings individually and then calculates a secondary. There's a lot of ooh, uh, si <laughs> math involved in this, but I don't know exactly how it does it. But you know what? You can just play around with it and have fun. So watch this. I'm just going to have fun with this over and over and over. I can just do, you know, I can just test this to see how often I hit because this thing's pretty accurate with that. I haven't hit it. I haven't even hit it yet. Okay, I've hit it like eight or nine times already. I have not hit it. Boom, I hit it there. Okay, I just want to see how often it hits. And I would highly recommend that if you're doing this craft, see, this is kind of the, the most mm, interesting or most challenging part of the craft right here, or most expensive part of the craft pot potentially. So this is the part you really want to spend a little bit of time theory crafting and figuring out how it's going to go. You know, I, I haven't hit it. Okay, boom, we hit it again. It looks like I'm getting about 1 out of 10 right now. I said, okay, there it is again. I, I was playing around with it earlier. Wow, two in a row right there. That was three out of the last four hit. Uh, wow, another one there. I did start seeing it come more often. So rest assured, uh, the reason, the real reason I'm showing you this right here is because I want to show you that demonstrate the power of the Harvest Reforge more common uh, modifier. And just how important it is that when you do those reforges, you really should be using more common not just the random chaos roll because this thing is going to hit chaos modifiers like crazy let's actually see it's got two chaos modifiers there let's see how many this has okay just as uh the one the one i hit all right uh one yeah two there you, you see it really really cranks up the odds of hitting a chaos modifier or more, even more than one chaos modifier so let's stop there for a second now this is actually a really rare outcome i i, I want to point this out because Usually when, when we hit this, it closes all the prefixes. All the prefixes are done. And you're going to see I, uh, steps 5 and 6 have everything to do with uh, what to do if you actually have a, th a third open prefix. It's really rare. But uh, let, let's do it again. You're going to see most of the time it's going to close the pre Wow, it didn't actually do it in a row again. <laughs> I tested this earlier. It took me like 10 times to hit uh, with the with an open third prefix. Now this this is a really common outcome right here. So this this is what you usually find when when you hit it. You're going to hit uh, you're going to have your dexterity gems, you're going to have your chaos gems, and you're going to have some random third prefix. I mean, you you hope and pray that it's uh, life, like a T1 life would just be stupendous if you actually hit that. Uh, usually it's going to be something not so great. In this case, we get a mid-tier mana roll, which uh, is not that great, really. But maybe it's okay for someone. Uh, let's look. Let's move on through here and see where we're at. I want to follow along. We got skip this step, assuming the harvest reforge resulted in plus one all chaos skill gems. 
Otherwise, return to step four. Yeah, so that just says, you know, you keep doing it. So the proper way to do this is like this, okay, right? I go in here, I I, I'm, I gotta re, re print, boom, okay? And then I go and go in and craft reforge. Oh, wow, I hit it with an open one. <laughs> okay uh yeah so all right well i'll leave it here for now um let's see i was starting to hit it a lot there at the end wasn't i uh move on to so it says here we can move to oh yeah third prefix rng so the actually a, a very very fortunate outcome is to have an open prefix i'm going to explain it why here in step six skip the step Assuming the harvest reforge resulted in closing the third prefix slot. What I have currently on my screen, it indeed did not close the third prefix slot. Because usually it forges up four modifiers. And its chances of closing that last prefix when it rolls two extra ones very high. But it did not in this case. So, if not, sell the item as is for profit. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good idea. To just sell that right there. Because if you go in and you check... Um, Okay, th this setup right here represents having an open prefix, basically. So if I go in and I try to search this up, well, yeah, of course, nothing is even going to come up. It's not going to come up any. What about in standard? Uh, something's not quite. Mm. Oh, I need to do this. That's why. It's going to come up this way. So this is standard offline. That's not going to be the greatest. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's pretty rare to find, isn't it? Yeah, we, we don't see... Uh, we don't see many. Here we go. Okay, so I'm checking Scourge offline now. So I can see that... Uh, okay, so th this person right here... This is a terrific prefix setup right here. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the ultimately the uh, crafted modifier you want to have. This is a, is a terrific um, crafted modifier for Toxic Rain or Caustic Arrow. It's the most desirable prefix in the game, basically, for rings and amulets. Uh, Non-channeling skills have minus mana cost. Um, 20x for that. Not going to lie to you guys, I would buy this. If this person was online, I would literally just buy this right now. That's absolutely worth buying at that price. Uh, that's what the craft not even finished. Okay, that's like it's not even finished. That's how that's how uh, lucky this is to, to have something set up like this. Um, but you can see, looking down further, we got um, you know this is still an unfinished craft. The second listing is the 30x, still unfinished. Uh, we finally get to a kind of relatively finished craft over here. So it does have the chaos damage dot multi of 45x, and then uh, I don't know what this abomination is here. This person decided to. Uh, he went super meta <laughs> crafting here. <laughs> I haven't actually seen this before. Not not a terrible decision, actually, if you, if you had a setup like this. Well, interesting. Okay. 55. So you can kind of see that it ramps up in, in price quite a bit really quickly. Uh, so it's really not a terrible idea to sell it for somebody else who wants to finish the craft themselves. Uh, but anyway, you can try to sell it right then. Or alternatively, you can meta craft suffixes cannot be changed in the harvest craft. Life more common or chaos more common now why are those two uh really good idea well life more common it's a little bit risky to do this because you have life on the suffix side too and it might slam in some random prefix but uh what you would hope for is a decent max life roll obviously you might have physical attack damage leeches life it's, it's kind of dangerous to do it's not the not the smartest choice uh, on the hunter side we even have a couple of them you could end up hitting uh chaos damage leeches life which is actually a pretty decent hit as well so you could also use reforge chaos in which case you are actually targeting this modifier right here uh with only 250 waiting uh or sorry with uh, 500 waiting because we already have chaos gems uh, it is the only chaos prefix, so you'd actually have a decent chance of hitting it. Uh, the only other thing you're competing with is the suffix side, so not a terrible idea. But probably the best thing to do would be what I listed next here. Uh, or continue to step 7, which is next step, but close the third prefix in advance of every subsequent reforge via metacraft. Can have up to three crafted modifiers with non-channeling skills have X minus blah 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 okay that's a lot of word salad there but there was no other way to, to really write that and i knew that when i was explaining the video <laughs> and i came to this part i'm just going to show it to you so instead of 
just instead of throwing an, an enormous word salad at you, I'm actually just going to show you. So I have the amulet here. The next thing I want to do is Hcraft suffix can have up to three modifiers. Boom. And oh, this is actually a problem because um, I actually need I actually need at least two suffixes open. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, actually, in this particular case, this is a little bit painful. But what you'd have to do here is instead of doing this, uh, you would have to craft benchcraft some random thing on a random prefix modifier. Then you go to harvest and reforge keep prefixes. Boom. Okay. So that dumps me down to uh, and that's a two x craft, by the way. Uh, I don't have what I'm about to show you right here is not actually budgeted into this. This is the one. This is a very special case, very high end, um, wh where you really uh, you, you're basically increasing the cost and dramatic, dramatically increasing the cost and the value of the item in the end uh, by pursuing this particular route. But I did want to show you because it's what I would do actually if this happened. Um, so I have okay. So I have prefix there. Now I'm going to uh, remove the prefix via bench craft. Remove. Okay, now I got two open suffixes, one open uh, prefixes. That's exactly what I needed. Uh, can I have a food crafted? Boom. Now we could do exactly what this uh, gentleman did right here, and we could just leave it like like this. Except I don't have a chaos damage dot multi, so I can't do that, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, if I had just these three modifiers isolated, I probably would do this actually. Uh, it's a pretty unusual situation. Can I have up to three crafted modifiers? Okay, then we're going to do prefixes cannot be changed. As well as... Uh, actually, uh, any any modifiers. i go ahead and put um, this one right here. Okay, so this is what it would look like right here. And what we're going to do is once we're going to move forward step seven now step seven is what i do whether i'm sitting with this in my hands or if i'm sitting with a totally random prefix in my hand you know or whatever so anyway um re-roll chaos boom and this was a superb hit right here this is actually best case scenario what you, what you just saw right here now there is a decent chance of this happening, actually, because if you see here on the weightings, now we're only working with suffixes. If I have a chaos reforge more common, I got 1500 on the suffix side there with uh, chaos resist. And then I have uh, for T1 only a 500. So that's a one in five. That's 500 out of 2500. That's a one in five chance of hitting exactly this and it's very likely that it comes out clean like this too because again when you do these reforges it usually will only max out at four modifiers total no matter what's on the item usually like 80 percent of the time so probably the best thing to finish off this way would be something like this this is how i'd actually finish off this item right here maybe something like this i don't know what i'd do with the last um or no, I'm sorry. That's not right. What what we do? What I do right here is I would finish off exactly the way uh, this item was right here. I just go ahead and close it out exactly like this, probably, in that case. Now, that's you know that's an alternative way to finish it, and that item probably worth well over fifty x. I'd say <laughs> that item's definitely worth at least fifty x. Uh, even just sitting here with the, this setup right here. Uh, aspect of the spider is not a bad thing to craft in this case. It's, it's a highly desirable uh, toxic rain uh, beast craft. But I, if you can steer away from doing a beast craft like that on an item, you should because you know your 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 pigeonhole your, your your wide net is being narrowed quite a bit if you do that. Let's go back to the far more likely outcome. A far more likely outcome of, what was it, just some random man, mana roll? Uh, 
Oh. Not, uh, Benchcraft. No, 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 no. Here we go. Alright, two, four. Okay, that's what I had before, right? And, I don't know, some random suffix. Okay. Okay, so this is what you're going to arrive at most of the time after step five. You're going to have something like this. And you're just going to have to settle for this. Now, you can try to annul a one and three and rip this off if you want. But that's not a very smart choice because you've already invested a minimum of probably an average minimum of four, six, six and a half, ten and a half. You're already sitting at around a 10x investment just to reach this point right here on average. So I don't really recommend annulling in case you're willing to just throw 30x in the drain because it's a one in three chance to hit it. Uh, you could just sell it. This is a case where you're just better off selling. Even if you don't want to touch the item and you, and you just you don't even want to mess with the item anymore, just sell it like that. Uh, don't even mess with it. But probably the best thing for you to do is to go ahead and finish it out anyway and craft uh, get, get that chaos.multi on it because it will uh, it will go under the eyes of many more buyers if you do that and it's not it doesn't cost much to finish out this craft from here really at least at a bare minimum put chaos.multi on it okay so yeah let, let's do that right there so it says the next thing here is gonna we're, we're moving okay so step six skip this step assuming the harvest craft resulted in closing a third prefix it did close the third prefix according to what i'm to what's on my screen uh we're going to step seven metacraft prefixes cannot be changed again okay so that's uh right here prefixes cannot be changed and harvest craft chaos more common why are we still using more common? Well, there's there's still not just one chaos row. I got chaos resist and chaos dot so I still should be using chaos more common because I could hit both. You could hit both, uh, potentially. Chaos revolve plus. Okay, boom. Let's see what I hit. Well, okay. So this is an unfortunate uh, result. I hit T1 chaos resist, no chaos dot and uh, it's a little bit unusual, but it actually closed all the suffixes. I have six affixes on here. Now I cannot metacraft on here. So what do I have to do? Well, I should probably do this right here. What I highlighted, you may initially have to harvest, reforge, keep prefixes to open a suffix slot for the metacraft. Well, there you go. All right, that's over here. Reforge, keep, prefixes, boom, clean it up. All right, now it's clean again. Let's see. Unfortunately, that was 2x, and that's unusual, so it's not really budgeted in here. It says it's under 0x because it's just not, it doesn't happen very often, but you saw it happen, so it's good. You were able to see uh, that it can happen sometimes. Uh, let's see, what do we got to do? We got to go back to step 7. Uh, skip this step. Uh, sorry, step eight. So skip this step, assuming the harvest reforge resulted in T1 chaos dot multi either clean with no other suffixes or with additionally high favorable suffixes, in which case you may wish to sell the item as is for profit. Otherwise, return to step seven. Well, the otherwise happened there, didn't it? So we got to do this. Step seven again. Here we go. Oh. Okay. All right. Great. Well, th this is like, this is excellent because uh, what I'm saying is literally coming true as I, as I, <laughs> as I say, it. remember how I just said, use chaos, uh, reforge more common because you might actually hit both the chaos resistant and the chaos dot multi boom. There it right, happened right there. It came out with five modifiers total and it hit chaos, uh, resistance as well. So, um, you know, w what are you going to do here? You, you can just probably, there's a number of different things you can do. Uh, it says here, uh, with highly favorable suffixes, in which case you may wish to sell the item for profit. I certainly would try to sell this item for profit if uh, the chaos resistance roll was like tier 1 or tier 2. That would be pretty cool. And I would probably just uh, benchcraft something on there like, I don't know, um, more strength and intelligence or all resist or, or um, dual resist or plus 1 minimum endurance charges i don't know just something uh something decent on there you know you look at the possibilities there's a, there's a number of decent choices 
uh, what you could do, and the so I am going to show you an example of finishing out this craft completely. In fact, um, what what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to revert back to uh, this step right here. So I'm going to show you exactly how I crafted my uh, the amulet you saw in the sale. Actually, I figure I might as well. So it looks something like this, and then I reforge chaos. I'm, I'm going to close the prefix with the chaos uh, leech roll, which is really not a bad roll. It's like top five uh, prefix rolls you can get. I think uh, tier one life is definitely better, and um, having the open prefix for the benchcraft minus mana cost on skills is arguably the best choice, potentially. But chaos leech is really good because chaos damage leech like doesn't exist in the game except for like a couple of garbage uniques uh, at series uh, flask which I use personally I use the flask and then this hunter influence modifier as well as like a subterranean modifier on rings apparently it's a delve only suffix or prefix on the rings which no, nobody's gonna mess with that probably so this is and it cannot even you cannot even get it on the tree I don't think you can get chaos damage energy shield leech off of mastery but you cannot get chaos damage life leech hardly anywhere in the game and this is one very rare place where you can get it so therefore it is actually considered a pretty good modifier and one that people will actually go after in some cases so to get that this this is all the way back to um right here where it says uh, harvest craft life more common or chaos more common this would be uh, a potential Thing you could do let's see how i got chaos more common boom okay well uh that's unfortunate see it's risky because you might mess it up this is why you don't necessarily want to do it so there on the second try i hit it okay i hit the chaos resist and that one so that closed the prefix so this this item looks exactly like the one you saw in this thumbnail on the prefix side right here okay and what we would do next moving forward prefixes cannot be changed and Harvest Reach Forge Chaos more common again because we need chaos.multi. So, there we go. Boom. Oh, I hit T1 chaos.multi, but I also had six free six suffixes. Oh, this is painful, okay? This does happen sometimes. You know, it's pretty rare when it actually closes all three suffixes here. And it hurts a lot because, you know, I would like to a null orb and try to hit one of these two off and save money. But it, no way, no way is that worth it because you, you do not want to be messing with the prefix. We got the prefixes done. That's the hard part. That's the really expensive part. So we got to play it safe and we got to do reforge prefix, keep prefixes. Got to try it all over again. I know it sucks. That's what we're doing. And again, I don't budget those inside this crap inside this sheet here with the estimated cost, average cost. I'm not budgeting uh, harvest, reforge, keep prefixes because it is pretty rare when you actually have to use those. Uh, Reroll again. T1 chaos damage dot time dot multiply clean. Right there it is, clean, okay? It's pretty common here. Now, like I said, it's one out of five. Um, and to hit it clean is, you know, probably about one out of six. Pretty, pretty likely to hit it. So, okay. Skip this step, assuming Harvest Craft Reforge resulted in T1 Chaos dot multi, either clean or with no other suff clean with no other suffixes, which is exactly what happened. So I'm skipping this step. Step nine: Metacraft suffix prefixes cannot be changed again. And use T4 Isling. By the way, the step up above says 10x because it's a 1 in 5 chance. So chances are you're going to have to metacraft prefixes cannot be changed just to hit this T1 chaos.multi. You're going to have to do it at least five, uh, on average 5 times. So that's where the 10x budget here is is in the, the red right here on average cost. Uh, here we are, we're on uh, Isling now. This is a guaranteed cost. If you want to close it the way I did with the Veil modifier, this is called going all the way with it. And definitely worth doing, I think, if you have you know three very good prefixes like I do here. Uh, prefixes cannot be changed. Isling is over here. Okay, now I have a 50-50 shot. I'm either going to rip off the chaos.multiplier, which is it, not good, or I'm going to rip off the prefixes cannot be changed. Okay. Uh, step 10. Skip this step, assuming T4 Isling didn't remove chaos.multi. 
Good. That's what happened. Otherwise, return to step seven. All the way up. About one, two, three, four. Four steps above. And that is going to cost you... It's going to cost you roughly 6x every Isling attempt. It's going to cost you 6x. Okay? And, yeah, it's going to cost you, you know, actually a lot you know, extra beyond that because you're having to do this over again. So, mm, yeah, it, it, it's definitely more, <laughs> P -p possibly more because, you know, if you, if you miss the eyes thing here, then you got to do all this over again. But yeah, um, there's no easy way to budget the estimated average cost for this one. It's, I said in the last video, uh, the, the double elevated chaos, um, they're not chaos, they're chaos in my mind, double elevated tailwind onslaught with elusive boots are actually a very deterministic craft. There's really not much other than a couple coin flips and that craft is just done. This is not as deterministic. There's some more RNG involved, um, but it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. The most RNG on this craft is in the very beginning. In the very beginning when you have the imprint reforge thing going on. That's pretty cheap to do that over and over again. It was not too bad, but this is the expensive part right here. When I did the craft myself, I got lucky and I hit the Isling in one go, just like I did right here on here. So I was able to finish the craft pretty cheaply. And in my little uh, emulator here, I'm able to finish the craft pretty cheaply, fortunately. Are we done? Step 11. Noxious Catalyst. Well, I do have those actually, don't I? Do, 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 do. Uh oh, we just do it at once. <laughs> okay. As you can see now, the Chaos Damage dot Multiplier gained an extra four on top. And it'll affect the Benchcraft in the end as well. Noxious Catalyst and Benchcraft rank two percent increased Chaos Damage. Oh, we're done. Basically done. Where is that at anyway? Chaos damage. Do you guys see it on here? Because I'm not seeing it. There's a lot. God, there's so many bench crafts. Here it is. Uh, okay, T1 here. Rank 2. It says T1 on the side, but it says rank 2 in the game. Okay. And that's exactly how I sold it. Well, actually, I, I divined it. Yeah, I, I did. And again, the, uh, just like I showed in the last video, there is no... Um, uh, step 12, use a combination of harvest rerolls until the item is perfect rolls on chaos t1 dot multi, which of course you're going to want the 24% there. And nearly perfect rolls everywhere else. I would, uh, I actually reforge until I got like <laughs> perfect chaos damage leech knife. It's pretty easy to hit. Uh, not a big deal. You don't have to mess with that, but that's weird. Why is my divine orb not working? Ah, oh, my divine orb's broken. <laughs> I guess it's broken in the, in the in the website. It's broken if there's a veiled suffix modifier. Anyway, uh, you can see that you could you uh, you you can actually do um, re rolls even with a veiled modifier just sitting on the item. You can do that, um, so that that's pretty cool. But actually, um, well, yeah, yeah, it's fine. You can do it that way. So. There's a, there's a separate option. So so again, this is exactly how I sold the item. I sold it for a hundred x, and I it had it listed for a grand total of about three minutes, and somebody messaged me for it. Uh, the dude and I we were laughing together because I said I actually said to him, um, "Wow, that was fast." Uh, now I'm second guessing my pricing because <laughs> you 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 never expect an item like this with that kind of budget and cost to sell in three minutes. And he was like, well, I just checked 30 seconds ago. Honestly, I don't really believe him. <laughs> I think he had a live search set up for it. And he said, oh, that's good enough. I'll take that. <laughs> just spent 100x. Uh, that same amulet didn't exist anywhere else on uh, Scourge League, even, even offline. But it did exist in Standard offline. And Standard showed that amulet somewhere around the 200x range on Standard. So, yeah, I, I, f I feel pretty good about selling it for 100x. I think it's pretty good. He, he claimed that he wouldn't have spent much more than 100x on it anyway. Anyway, it, it was a fun little banter, but I had to make the video after that. I mean, that was incredible to put that finish that amulet quickly. 
but it the it went like clockwork for me. I had almost I failed almost no coin flips. Um, in fact, I got so lucky that when I was at the uh, stage where I was imprinting and I did the Chaos Reforge, I hit the Chaos Skill Gems, I hit the Chaos Damage Leech Life, Leech Life and I hit the Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier T1 in one hit. <laughs> so definitely be using Chaos Reforge more common, because <laughs> that can happen. Uh, I, I did this craft in about 18x. I think, I think it was about 18x in total for me. So I spent about 18... I spent under 20x to make that item... And I profited 100x, a gross profit from it. So you are, there is one other option here. And if you want to, instead of finishing it out this way, you can try to unveil it yourself. I don't recommend unveiling it because I prefer to leave the gambling to the, to the buyer in this case. There, there are so many different suffixes. Some of them are pretty bad and some of them are pretty good. But there is no like super good suffix and the potential buyer may, may actually select a different suffix that you would have selected. Like maybe they want attributes and you would have chosen double chaos, uh, chaos uh, elemental resist. But let's see what, what the options are here. It says uh, leave the item unveiled or alternatively benchcraft rank one. You have Valpak while focused to block. The reason I chose that one is because... You go into all the veiled suffixes here and you, you think about blocking. You see all the weightings over here on the right. Uh, two of them have higher weightings than any of the others. It says focus has a percent increased cooldown recovery rate or you have Val packed while focus. I have a 3,000 weighting. And so that, that's the strongest block you can give. Uh, and, and you absolutely, those are both garbage. So you don't want to hit either of those. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to put in... Uh, you have Val Pact right here. Okay, so I'm blocking 3,000 waiting. But I mean, my goodness, just look at how many different things there are. There, there's dual stats here. There's minimum charges, which somebody might want minimum endurance charges, for example. But maybe you're, you're not sure, right? So it's risky to unveil it. You got a bunch of garbage here, like trap throwing speed, totem throwing speed, mine throwing speed, brand attachment. Right? Those are all complete junk. Uh, you got the dual resists that are good. You got s chance to trigger summon spectral wolf on kill. I don't even know if that's good, actually. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, you have increased attack and cast speed, which would be pretty good, actually. Yeah. So let's see what we get. Unveil. Cold and Chaos Red. So at least I got I got one good one. Dex and Intelligence. I wouldn't actually pick an attribute role unless it was Strength and Intelligence. But even then, it's probably not that good. So this is the one I would go with here. Uh, a, a staple. A standard. You know, Elemental, Chaos, Dual Resist. You can never go terribly wrong with that choice. And then um, you, would, you would leave the Benchcraft and go back to... Well, presumably Chaos Damage. Maybe... Um, you know, you could put all resist or whatever you wanted on here. As for selling purposes, I'd recommend chaos damage because it's actually increased by 3% because of the catalyst, which makes it a little more attractive. So that's it. The craft is done. That's uh, exactly how, how to do it. And I will have linked in here uh, all of this text here under the description below. Looking at an estimated minimum cost, which is basically bare minimum cost to reach what I reached right here. You're looking at 14x. And you'd be pretty dang lucky to hit that <laughs> bare minimum. I almost hit the bare minimum cost when I crafted it earlier. As, because it is a higher RNG, the, the ceiling of average cost is a bit higher. And there's much more variety and different potential decent roles. That's why there's so much text in here. Because it's like, well, alternatively you could do this or alternatively you could do that. I'm sorry it could be a little confusing, but there's a lot more RNG involved in this craft. It is a little bit more niche. It's not super deterministic and straightforward like the Tailwind Elusive Onslaught Boots. More challenging, but hey, you know, we're going to get into the more challenging, more interesting uh, uh, high-end crafts as I continue this series. I'm pretty sure I will do the Quiver next. Um, it is actually pretty de deterministic, actually, more than this. Uh, but yeah, I mean... I was super motivated to make this video after I got that sale. Um, it, it's the biggest item I've sold all league. It was 100x. I've not sold anything for that much yet this league. So that's exciting. And, you know, I want to excite you guys to, to try your own high-end crafting things. I just made 80 exalts, like net profit, in very little time at all, really. Um, in fact, if I recall 
correctly, the process of re-rolling harvest, re harvest re-rolls was more time-consuming than almost anything else for this particular item, ironically. But yeah, uh, why don't you guys give it a try? I'll give you a sneak peek at one other item I finished, uh, a really big item. I'm not up to that just yet. Another one I plan to make a video on at some point. Check out this bad boy right here. We got ourselves a fractured essence, then re-essence, chaos damage, uh, explicit on top of chaos damage, implicit to be catalysted. We got a top Nox third suffix, T1 life, eyes linked into a max mana, not exactly the one I wanted. I was hoping for reduced mana cost on items secondary. And then the uh, obligatory non-channeling skills have minus cost. So this is the brand new ring I have. It's an in-game ring. This sucker costs me over 100x to craft. <laughs> and it, I definitely spent more than the average to craft this. But yeah, uh, just fracturing this costs on average like 50x, by the way. So that's an outrageously expensive craft. Easily the most expensive item I have uh, currently. But I'm proud of it. And uh, honestly, it would probably be better off with just a plus one frenzy <laughs> ring for like 250x. But anyway, uh, yeah, just a little sneak peek at something else I did that was fun and a, a big craft. I will probably make a video on that ring at some point in the future. I don't know. I'll probably save that for next season, actually. Uh, maybe, although actually I may not make that ring next season. So, if you have any questions, please uh, list down to the comments below. I will link all of this information here in the description below. I will also link uh, this particular trade URL so you can have your own there's a di various different things you can check you can check for uh, the ring in its finished state like this like if I want to look and I want to find uh, some other completely finished rings and seeing how much they cost I can see that uh, you know the average cost of 36 X is other people that have theirs finished uh, around 30 40 X Granted, uh, my budget includes the Isling portion, whereas a lot of people are not doing the Isling portion. And if you skip the Isling portion, you're looking at more like 25x on average. That so you can see it has a very good chance of being profitable, and uh, it may not take. It, a buyer may come along and snatch up your item in a much shorter period of time than you expect. <laughs> take it from me. So I know it's just one anecdotal evidence case, but yeah, take it from me. It could happen. Uh, crafting is a lot of fun, and I just spent the whole day um, trying to help you guys understand a little bit better on how it's done. So, hope you like the video. Uh, if you want to see more of the crafting series, let me know. Uh, for now, I'm going to go back to Delirium Everywhere. i got to get a character up to 95, and that's what's on my agenda. So, I will not be making another video uh, this evening or probably tomorrow as well, but uh, in a couple days. Definitely come out with something, so look forward to that. Thank you guys, and we'll see you around in the next video.